In this lecture, we're going to look at behavioral views of learning, specifically operant conditioning. Operant conditioning was developed by B.F. Skinner. He was an American psychologist who lived between 1904 and 1990. He was really into manipulating voluntary behavior using experimental analysis of behavior. The idea behind operant conditioning is that we want to strengthen or weaken voluntary behaviors as opposed to classical conditioning, which focused on involuntary biological responses. There are three components inside of operant conditioning, which include antecedents, operants, and consequences. Antecedents are going to be the event before, so something that happens before something. Operants are going to be the behavior that leads to the goal. Consequences are going to be the things that happen after the event. These aren't necessarily good or bad, but they're just something that happens. An example would be an antecedent. There's a test coming up on a Friday. So we need to make a choice, a voluntary choice, to study for the test or not study for the test. That would be our operant. Our consequence is going to be what follows the test and studying, which is the grade that we receive. The important thing to remember about operant conditioning is that we have different types of reinforcement and punishments. Reinforcement means that we're always increasing a desired behavior. A punishment is always decreasing an undesired behavior. The idea between positive and negative is not good or bad. Positive does not mean good. Negative does not mean bad. Positive means we are adding something, and negative means we are taking it away. Sometimes these are seen as presentation or removal. Positive is adding something. Negative is taking something away. Positive reinforcement. This is when we want to add something to increase a behavior. So when you get something that you want, you want to repeat that behavior until it happens every time. So if a student wants attention and cracks a joke or makes a loud noise in class, the rest of the class will laugh. That person will continue to make noises or jokes because the behavior that they wanted occurred. Another example would be students studying hard for an exam and they receive an A. The A is the positive reinforcement for studying. The most common types of positive reinforcement are rewards and praise. Negative reinforcement means we're taking something away to increase a behavior. A good idea. An example of this is a teenager who needs to take the garbage out, but is clearly too busy doing something else. So his mom nags at him, take out the garbage, take out the garbage. After being nagged for a long time, the teenager finally takes out the garbage. To get rid of the nagging, he takes out the garbage. So he's eliminating the negative stimulus, which reinforces and will likely increase the chances that he will take out the garbage again next week. Another example is the buzzing car seat belt. So when you get inside of a new car, you don't put your seatbelt on, turn the engine on, the buzzer beeps at you. If you want it to stop, you put on your seatbelt. Sometimes it's easy to get positive and negative reinforcement mixed up because it all depends on the point of view of what's going on and who's in the scenario. Positive punishment. The idea behind punishment, remember, is to decrease the behavior. The effect defines whether it is punishment or not. For both punishment and reinforcement, depending on the point of the view 
point of view of the recipient. That's always important to remember. So for presentation punishment or positive punishment, we want to add something to decrease behavior. The most common idea behind this is in schools is detention or having to stay in from recess. Negative punishment is going to be taking something away to decrease behavior. We see this oftentimes when somebody gets bad grades and at home they lose their TV or phone privileges. Another example is getting caught for speeding. You sometimes can lose the ability to drive. The important thing to remember again is that positive means we're adding something, negative means we're taking something away, reinforcement is to increase a behavior, and punishment is to decrease a behavior. Another concept are reinforcement schedules. If we have continuous, it means that it's always happening. Something is always being reinforced. For example, when you go to the water fountain, the drinking fountain, you push the button. Unless it's broken, water always comes out. Every time you push that button, you get reinforced because water comes out. That is continuous reinforcement scheduling. Intermittent means not constant. So if the drinking fountain was broken, it wouldn't be continuous because you wouldn't be being reinforced by the water coming out. There are a few types of intermittent reinforcement schedules. The first idea is ratio. Ratio is reinforcement that is given based on the number of responses. Okay, and fixed means that it is applied on a regular basis. There's a fixed number. A good example of this is you see a mom and a child in a grocery store, and the child is messing around with stuff, and the mom counts to five every time. So she says, don't make me count. So she starts counting. One, two, and the kid recognizes that but doesn't do anything. Three, four, and finally the kid responds because he knows that mom counts to five every time. That is a fixed ratio schedule. A variable schedule means that the reinforcer after variable number of responses. So it's applied on an irregular basis. A good example of this is gambling. So it varies. You don't know when you're going to win every time you're gambling. Another idea is interval scheduling. And this is based on time. Ratio is based on number of responses and an interval is based on the amount of time. So again, we have fixed and variable. Fixed is going to be on a regular basis after a fixed amount of time. And a good example of that is a yearly evaluation. Oftentimes in jobs, we have yearly evaluation. Okay, Because it's fixed, it happens on a regular basis every year. And it's based on time, which is an interval schedule. It's set up and it's going to happen. Again, with variable, it's applied on an irregular basis. The best example of a variable interval schedule is a teacher giving pop quizzes in the class. You have to be working hard at all times in order to be ready. This reinforces students to study after every class. A few more things inside of operant conditioning are extinction, cueing, and prompting. Extinction is seen both in classical conditioning and operant conditioning. This reduces the behavior that had previously been maintained or increased. Again, it's reducing a behavior that had previously been maintained or reinforced. And this happens when you stop the reinforcers. Q 
queuing is the idea that there's a stimulus that sets up a behavior. Okay, this is an antecedent and it signals what behavior will be reinforced, which is the desired behavior. A way that we can kind of see this is a teacher saying, raise your hand if you've ever been to Nevada. Raise your hand if you've ever been to California. Raise your hand if you've ever been to Texas. Have you ever been to Tennessee? And the students will continue to raise their hand. The idea of queuing is that it happens. Prompting is a reminder that follows a cue. So when the teacher said, raise your hand if, that is a prompt, a reminder for the cue that they need to be using in class, which is physically raising their hand.